Okay, there I am. I'm hoping people can actually hear me this time. Um, so sorry to whoever was watching last night. Um, apparently I didn't have my settings done right and I didn't know that. So um, all in the background of the live stream, there's just, well, it wasn't really the background. It was pretty much all the audio was completely messed up. So I had to take that video down because it was just, mm. it wasn't pleasant to listen to. Um, kudos to whoever did listen for as long as they could. Totally understand why you left that, because it was, you know, not that that wasn't pleasant. Anyway, um, I'm just going to work on some leaving here for a little bit. Um, still working on saving up for a new computer, so it's about the, the best way I can show you guys my the weaving and stuff like that. Um, been kind of busy the past few months. Um, as you can see, my surroundings changed again. I just recently moved to another town. Um, I had some more medical stuff come up um, beginning of August. I had to go back in for another surgery to correct some damage that was caused by the previous surgery I had. So yay, two surgeries in two years. So much fun. But um, finally getting past all that now. Um, kind of got settled into my new apartment here and finally getting kind of trying to get back into the swing of things and doing weaving. So I'll show you what I've somewhat managed to accomplish in that time. I finally finished this bad boy. So this one's completely done. All the way done. Including with a nice braided fringe ending here. And yeah, this one took me far longer than it should have to complete it. I had looked back through some of my old pictures that I had and um, figured out that I actually put this one, this project together three years ago. Yeah, three years ago. No, it didn't take me three years of time to weave the whole thing. It's just, it was, I did weaving so inconsistent through college that I just never got around to finishing it. But I have now. And this is a the double lightning, which is basically a smaller version of the Somption Sash. And it's finally finished. It goes great with the dress that I originally made it for, which when I originally started with, the, the dress was actually kind of baggy on me. So I kind of made this to cinch it in. Yeah, thanks to life in college, that point is kind of moot. But um, I made it big enough to where I can use it as a scarf as well. Double wraps around my neck rather nicely. And it's actually a lot warmer than I thought it was going, than um, I thought it would be, considering it's just one layer of yarn. But the, the weaving on it is tight enough to where it holds in a lot of heat. So I can double up as a scarf as well as use it as a sash or a belt if I want to. So there's that one. Uh, I'm still working on all the other ones that I got. So I have a chevron set up in front of me right now. And um, the diamond right here in the background here. And then I also have the other two, which I still have to get out. So I still have these guys. Thankfully, I was able to pack them up to where I could easily find them again. So they weren't buried in all my stuff. I still have the arrowhead that I have to finish which this one's going to be a long one because I like double wrap belts and the lighting, which I got to finish. Of course, I also have to remember how to do these ones too. So that should be fun because I've also been out of it for two months. Oh, longer than that. Gosh, when was the last time I posted a video? Anyway, so that's kind of what's been going on in my life right now. I know it's, Kind of a lame excuse for not getting videos up but i want to be honest with everybody and try to just kind of do what i can here so i'm going to go ahead and get the camera moved around and reposition so you guys can take a look at what i'm doing here and hopefully my camera cord will reach we'll see so bear with me here as i adjust this okay Kind of go at an angle here and hope probably need to move it down a little bit. Yeah, go that way a little bit. Um, let's see. This is gonna have to take some getting used to here because 
This is a slightly different setup than what I'm used to. I kind of had a certain way of doing things back at my old place. And this is kind of new here. I'm hoping you guys can see all this okay. I'm hoping there's enough light. Don't actually have a whole lot of light here in the office. Um, I mean, I, I have lamps in here, but there's no like actual like ceiling light fixture. So all the only light I got right now are my lamps. So let's see what I can do here. And hopefully I don't knock into the camera too much that you can't see what I'm doing. But this one's just a straight chevron pattern, like what you've seen me do in the past. Actually, this is the one that you saw me previously set up with the, the cotton thread earlier. And it's pretty much the same thing of weaving from the middle to the outside edge. Um, I was uh, looking around on YouTube a little bit ago and just looking around, just seeing what other people's te techniques are. And I did see a couple of techniques that I kind of want to incorporate into my own. One of them was for um, setting up your yarn on the dowel rod. The way that this person did it made it so much easier in my opinion, and I'm going, okay, the next time I set up a project, I'm going to have to try that out and show you guys and see how well it works. And the other thing that she did was she also had a different way of weaving. Um, the way I learned it and the way a lot of other people learn it is weaving across like what I'm doing here. But the way she did it was completely different. And I'll do one more pass of the way that I learned, which is the weaving across here. And so there's the one side. And here I'll do the other side. So, yeah, this, this is kind of like the, the old, you know, surefire, you know, beginner's way of doing it. She had a bit of a more advanced technique that I kind of want to work on and try to perfect here. So, basically what she did, it was pretty neat, was that she weaved across with her finger separating out the threads, the ones that are supposed to go over and the ones that are supposed to go under. So she did that. So there, I've pretty much weaved straight across and I have the threads separated. And then she took the thread on the other side that's supposed to go through and then she just pulled it through like that. Now, I'm not used to this because I've, frankly, I didn't learn how to weave like that. But I like how quick and easy it is. So I'll do it on the other side here. So she literally just separated everything out with her finger. Make sure I get this right here. So not used to doing it this way. So yeah, she did that, separating everything out. Make sure it's the right way here. That one needs to go over, I think. Yep, that one needs to go over. So there's that. And then she just took this and just pulled it right on through. So that's how she did it. I liked it. I need to work on it some more because it's different. It's not in my hands muscle memory. So it's just because my muscle memory is the old, the old way here, this way. This is in my muscle memory. This is something I can do while talking to other people and not even looking at my hands because this is just the way I've always done it. But that new way that I picked up, it's, frankly, it's quicker. I think it's faster. It's somewhat more, sim I think it's simpler, to be honest. And I think for, 
for patterns like the, the chevron and the diamond, I think it'd be pretty nice. Um, patterns that involve interlocking, I think the old way would probably be better because you do have to stop and switch out your threads and, well, frankly, keep and um, go the uh, and uh, bleh. can't talk tonight. My goodness, but yeah, you have to you have to stop stop and interlock your threads and then keep going with a new thread. And I'm not sure if that way of kind of pre-weaving everything before feeding your thread through would work with those patterns. But with this one, it's just, here, let me try it one more time here. I can definitely see the ease and appeal of it. So I'm just kind of going through here. Now, I don't know if this is something that only more advanced weavers do. I don't know if this is something that a lot of beginners do. But yeah, she just kind of did that and then fed that right on through. Now, the, the video that I saw this done in, the weaver was a lot more experienced than I am. And so I'm assuming that it's more kind of advanced technique because she said herself that the people who taught her, her, her mother and her grandmother, had learned how to do it the, the old uh, the old fashioned way where they just weaved across one thread at a time. She said she was the one who came up with this idea. I guess it really just depends on how you like to weave. If you prefer the old way, then by all means do it the old way. But if you kind of like this technique, do it that way. Um, use, the, use this technique. Um, the results are the same either way. I, again, since I'm so used to doing it this way, I really can't tell you if one technique is better than the other. I think it's really up to what your personal opinion is. But I just thought that was a, a, a neat way of doing the weaving, which I had never thought of before. So, here we go. But yeah, uh, again, I'll have to practice that new way, that new technique a little bit more because I'm honestly, I am pretty much set in doing it this, the way I'm doing it now, which is taking the thread and weaving it across each indi individual thread. It's not because this is the way I've been doing it since I was, gosh, I think I picked this up when I was 11, just when, when I started weaving and I'm 26 now. So 15 years of practice um, kind of like, kind of like the difficulty of teaching an old dog new tricks. You know, it's just when it's not something you're used to, when you've been doing it one way for so long, trying it a new way can be a little difficult. But yeah. But, uh, the next time I set up a project, I'm definitely going to try the technique I saw with stringing it on the dowel rod. It was, I, I mean, it was definitely looked a lot easier than what I do. Definitely a lot easier than what I showed you. And after I saw it, I'm like, why didn't I think of that sooner? It definitely made a lot more sense. So the next time I get a project set up, I will show you what she did with setting up the yarn on the dowel rod. Alrighty, here we go. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to pop them into the chat. I'll answer them the best that I can. Um, or you can leave comments below after the, the, uh, the video posts, after the live stream is done. You can also check me out on Facebook and Instagram. I have a, a Facebook page called The Weaving Illustrator, and you can look me up at Weaving Illustrator on Instagram. I try to keep uh, post updates of projects that I'm working on. Um, my Instagram shows some more of my work. Um, I do the weaving videos on here, on YouTube, but I also post some of my other artwork on my Instagram and on my Facebook. So if you're interested, you can go ahead and take a look at those. You can see some of my other work. You can tell me what you think. And um, any comments or feedback is welcome. I'm always looking for constructive criticism in my work, trying to figure out how to 
make it better. So yeah, kind of working on expanding a little bit more in my social media presence. Because beforehand, I really didn't have one. I just, I did the videos on here and I had my personal Facebook profile. That was it. Um, and then I set up my uh, my uh, Weaving Illustrator page. And then I set up an Instagram for it too. So that seems to have gotten a little more, gotten me a little more traffic here where seeing stuff is concerned and getting feedback. It's been pretty nice actually. Okay, I'm going to pause here on this one and move on to one of the other patterns. Um, the diamond pattern, I, I would work on that one, but I'm kind of at the point where it's basically just a chevron. So I'm actually going to just skip ahead to the lightning pattern. I know people seem to be more interested in the more advanced, pro the more advanced patterns, the, the lightning pattern and the arrowhead pattern anyway. So I'm just going to go ahead and give people what they want. Because, I mean, chevron and diamond are pretty straightforward and simple and uh, easy. And don't really, they're, they're really not that difficult. So I'm going to kind of pull this out of my clamp here. My and Mo. Let's take you. Sure, get this the right way. Which way was I working on it here? That's how I was working on it. Okay. So there's the arrowhead pattern. Oh gosh. Ooh. Another thing that's been kind of slowing me down is um, I've been having problems with my left wrist. Um, I don't know if you can see, but I got some swelling here. Um, turns out that might be some pretty bad case of tendonitis. And I found that when I do weaving, it seems to aggravate it. So I can't do too much weaving at the same time. I kind of got to kind of stretch things out a little bit. And yeah, it's kind of what I got to do there. Let's see, where was I here? One, two, three, four, five, six. Did I switch with the seventh? Switched with the seventh thread, I think. I hope I did anyway. Three, four, five, six. Okay, yep, yeah, I did. Been so while since been so long since I've done this pattern, I gotta remember where I was at. Alrighty, so this one, pretty easy peasy. Just gonna start weaving across here. And this is where you see where um that new technique I picked up would be a little bit problematic. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Because you're constantly having to stop, switch out your thread, and weave across. So, three, four. Five, six, seven. Excuse me for pausing in my sentences because I can't seem to count and talk at the same time. <laughs> Let's make sure I got the right one here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I'm just gonna switch with the seventh thread there. And we've gone down to the end. But yeah, the new technique I picked up wouldn't really work too well with the interlocking pattern, I think, because you do have to stop and switch out your threads when you get to a point. And um, the weaving straight across just would not allow for that, I don't think. Did I do that right? Mm, yes, I did. There it is. Kind of lost it there for a second. It's like, where'd you go? Ah! Okay, so here, there's my first interlock right there. And then the second interlock is right here. So I can keep going with this then. Two, 
music. Five and then six. Oh, and also if I have uh, sound issues again, if you could um, just let me know, because I tried doing the live stream last night and apparently my sound wasn't working correctly and I had no idea until the end of the video. So if I have sound issues, could you guys please let me know so I can kind of stop, start over and try again? That would be great. Oh, Richard, thank you. I appreciate that, thanks. Here we go. Just trying to keep up here. Glad the camera's bright enough for you guys. I'm actually having trouble seeing what I'm doing. I have a feeling if I brought more light in, it would be too bright and you still wouldn't be able to really see much. So I'm gonna count my blessings and be thankful that you guys can see what I'm doing with my hands here. Gosh, this is so different from working with the uh, cotton yarn. I've been working on the uh, the previous one, the Chevron, for quite some time now and kind of taking it around with me when I travel and working on it kind of exclusively for a little bit. So switching back to the acrylic yarn here, um, it's a big texture difference. And I'm actually having a little difficulty um, kind of transferring back over to working with uh, acrylic, which is um, kind of funny, actually. Yeah. Take that one down. And that one goes up. There we go. And just kind of tighten the threads up here a little bit. Um, quick and easy way to kind of just tighten up your weaving with the uh, lightning pattern is to actually go to where your cross threads are and just pull down on where you interlocked the threads with. It kind of pulls everything together and Kind of tightens everything up. You don't want to pull too hard because then you'll tighten it up a little too much. Oh, paracord. That's actually... Um, hold on a sec. Let me respond to somebody real quick. But... Um, There you go. Um, just replying to somebody in the chat real quick. Um, I actually haven't um, person in the chat commented on uh, the fact that they've been trying stuff with paracord. And I haven't tried paracord yet, so that's actually a material that's completely new to me. I don't know how um, how well it works. Um, I know a lot of people use it for like the, the, the macrame survival bracelets, so I assume that it would um, I assume that it would uh, actually probably be a lot more sturdier especially with all the, the woven components. Yeah, throughout my uh, years of doing research into weaving, um, a lot of uh, Native Americans would make um, bag straps. Um, some of them used them for um, actual like components in um, uh, kind of like the, the baskets that they would carry like their babies in and stuff like that. Um, they would make extra wide ones to wrap around their waists to prevent hernias when they were doing heavy lifting. So if that tells you anything about how strong these weaving patterns can be, I don't know what does. I don't know what does. So I can only imagine what making one of these out of paracord would do. That thing would probably be tough as all get out. Okay. 
try not to bump into my camera too much here. <laughs> okay. Yeah, most of my experience with weaving has been with more um, just mostly with acrylic yarn. I have recently dabbled into cotton yarn and such, mostly because of, um, well, frankly, budget issues. When you're a college student working on this kind of stuff, you really don't have the money to go out and buy the buy um, cotton and wool to work with. Because um, anybody who does traditional arts and crafts know buying the traditional materials um, can get pretty expensive. And I'm Certain, um, you know, paracord can buying and um, trying to get enough for a project such as, you know, even the belt here that I'm working on now. I'm fairly certain that's not a not not a cheap endeavor. <laughs> there we go. I think I got. One more pass on here, and then I'll move on to the arrowhead pattern that I got going. One, two, three, four, five, six. That should be seven. Two. Okay, yep, there it is. Blue. Wait. Mm. Yes. No. Oh, that was definitely wrong. Hold on. Yeah. I definitely did that wrong. Give me one second here. <laughs> okay, that stays there. This goes here. And then this goes across, I believe. Yes. Pretty sure anyway. I think I did that right. Hold on. Oh, no, I did not do that right. What was I thinking? Oh, my gosh. Hold on. I got to fix this thing. <laughs> I got so caught up talking about paracord, I wasn't paying attention to what it was doing. Give me a second. Mistakes happen, people. Here's proof. <laughs> oh my gosh, what did I do? Okay, here we go. Gotta fix that. And that. This was the original pass. There we go. Okay, what I do here? Oh, that's what I did. I started with the wrong thread to begin with. Oh my gosh. Okay, hold on. What am I doing? What the? F okay. So I'm gonna pull that one out. 